On the inside, a fire bellows ain't nothing like its more popular air-spitting cousin. Without an insulated air intake, that thing's liable to blow up on you. The shard works like a charm. You can hear the monument's heartbeat again. Seems the gods recommended this place to all their friends. Think the gods are gonna help? Messia. Garmouth. We spotted a pecker carrying a shard to Mount Zan. Not much left to Mount Zan nowadays. It's like a cross between a zoo and a prison break. Grady incinerators where we sent off all our trash to be burned or be eaten by the wilds. Welcome to Grady Incinerator, home of the hottest wings east of Ceylandia. In all seriousness, the incinerator was a dump, and it had a problem with peckers. Blasted things would swoop in and spread trash all around, until we started using fire. We couldn't just torch them all at once. We had to use restraint. The peckers were willing to fight tooth and nail for all that trash. Those peckers mean business. Stick em and cook em, or the other way around. Makes no difference. Know how we kept the city clean? We put all our trash in Grady Incinerator. Peckers that flocked together were easy pickings. The peckers were willing to fight tooth and nail for all that trash. You'd almost think those peckers like getting cooked. Wouldn't have thought to bring a bellows to a shootout, but it just might work. Ever see a kid with a musket and a fire bellows? Bit of a disturbing sight. We could have a fine old cookout with that stuff. Too bad that's not the plan. Keeping the incinerator clean was a paying job, but not a pleasant one. Bow and bellows make a strange and fearsome team. The cinders kept the city good and warm. Made it thrive. Lemaine. Udrig. Wasn't any other way to teach those peckers some respect. Too bad we can't all fly. Who knows why we fought so hard to defend our own trash. Now we can light them up or pin them down. Maybe both. Got a feeling those tools ain't just for use at the old forge. Last thing the gods are gonna do is make our lives easier. Can't rightly call Mount Zan the mountain anymore. There's no more mountains now. It's a delicate situation. The beasts of Mount Zan go all out. Mount Zan is all the wilds have left. The beasts of the wild came down from the mountains. There's no place left for the beasts of the wild to go. So they figure they'll hold out right here on a slab of mountain the Calamity forgot. Good thing for those beasts the Calamity saved leftovers. We only found their little lair because they found themselves a little shard. The creatures of the wild, they've been building a bastion of their own. Those beasts been hoarding all the valuables they could find. But they ain't yet prepared for any company. They even dragged their children into this. Without a doubt, the situation stinks. Besides, we have to take back what's ours. Look at it this way. It's either them or us. But if we win, they win too. Our bastion is everybody's gain, not just ours. Best thing we can do for those beasts right now is put them down quick and clean. There's only one kind of mercy left these days. What the city left behind, those beasts took for themselves. Unfortunately, there's no explaining that to a simple beast. Those beasts been hard at work fixing up the place. They've been searching for cores and shards, just like we have. They've rounded up their survivors, just like we have. Maybe they've thought about turning back, just like we have. We just really need their shard. Kid got it fair and square. That's the way. He's done what's best for him, don't you worry. Don't you worry. We'll all be better off once the bastion is complete. Suppose it's true a little song can put things in perspective. Fix that thing right up, didn't we? Made these goings on a little livelier. The service for all the men and women who serve Ceylandia. Well, if you can't burn it, you can always blow it to mother on high, right? The monument's getting better. Zolf sure did a number on it, though. 
just the occasion to crack open the distillery's private reserve. Fallen malt is filled with crunchy minerals that'll keep you safe out on them rocks. Kid ain't taking chances, takes all the firepower he can carry. Black rise like hot pineapple chowder on a cold day. Brings back memories. A pike in a galley and mortar. Now that's some terror from the high seas. Life wine so rich, they say it's brought men back from the brink for one last taste. With all that firepower, kid looks like he's ready to raid a fort. Any brushes pike can cut to the bone, but that one can cut through it. That mortar's gonna leave a lasting impression. Taught him an old trick from a galleon gunner I once knew. That's some heavy-duty hardware. Not exactly the most delicate pairing. Walk by a kid with a machete and a mortar, you just keep on walking. Sometimes arrows ain't enough, so kid packs something bigger just in case. Kid's ready to hit him fast and hit him hard. With that mortar and hammer, he's like a one-man demolition squad. That'll spice things up next time he gets in trouble. Now that's what I call a knife. Toughest thing about using that gas can is keeping a grip on it. Just a couple shards left. The quarry's gotta have one, right? Kid carves through all of them in a flash. Well, the kid's gone and struck terror in the hearts of squirts everywhere. The dynasty to the families of the city. All reunited. Once you started the course, they made you finish. A good enough run at Camp Dauncey could get you promoted to captain on the spot. The wilds ain't so scary now, are they? The secret to how we built Ceylandia so tall and proud lies in Burstone Quarry. Boundless Bay used to be a weapons test and dry dock. Ain't never been this dry, though. Ceylandia's armada was a glorious sight, and our ship's mortars were unstoppable. At Boundless Bay, our Navy put those mortars through a rigorous inspection. Had to use squirts to simulate explosive impact on the surface of the sea. Choosing targets with those mortars was one of the trickiest parts. Too bad about the Armada, but at least one of those mortars survived. The Skippers delivered us from the motherland. Wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of those. If you got a thing for heavy artillery, then I've got the place for you. A variety of modifications could be used to enhance the power of a mortar. If a galleon mortar couldn't squish enough squirts, it was simply replaced. I gotta say, kid's the fastest shot I ever seen. He blew through slinger range like it was nothing. Imagine everything you'd need to build a city like Ceylandia. It takes hard work and planning, and it also takes a burstone quarry. Just takes three things to build the greatest city in the world. Hard times in the quarry these days. Those rocks won't soon forget this. The Ura tunnels beneath the quarry must have softened the blow from the calamity. We bought the whole place from the Ura on the cheap. Same goes for its natives. Rattletails. The quarry ain't exactly up to safety standards no more. Rattletails ain't the worst of it either but more about that in a little bit. The quarry came with a lifetime supply of windbags. Windbags smaller than the naked eye can see are nesting in those rocks. Not only are these rocks a source of life, we found that the oldest ones remember things. But there was even more to it than that. They're recording everything, all the time, taking it all in. No wonder all those beasts were drawn to the quarry. The rocks were calling them. Keeping the quarry free from pests turned out to be a problem. Rattletails kept tunneling in to snack on windbags. Windbags tended to the rocks, so we had to keep the rattletails at bay. Without those windbags, the quarry might not have its special qualities. Can't be too careful in there. Even stink eyes started taking root in here. Now why would the Ura sell off such a fascinating place? The Ura always were a superstitious lot. Might be the gods told them the quarry's bad news. On top of that, you know the Ura hated anything above ground. 
Might be the quarry just got too much sunshine for their liking.